po ay klase ng doktor na espesyalista po na nag-aalaga ng mga pasyente na may diabetes, goiter, at saka may problema sa hormones. No? So, gusto ko mangyari today is gusto ko pong i-discuss sa inyo uh, ng very short at saka very brief lang yung discussion tungkol sa diabetes para po alam ninyo kung ano yung mga basics tungkol dito sa sakit na to. Gaya na sinabi ko, andito tayo sa Cebu, pero I'd like to say hello to, to the audience in Manila as well as the other areas around the Philippines. I know we're broadcasting uh, live sa Facebook and uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for getting invited here and I hope that you learn something from the talk today. So, mamaya po, magkakaroon tayo ng konting time for Q&A. Siguro po, masasagot po yung mga tanong ninyo tungkol sa diabetes. No? So, we'll start off with uh, our lecture for today. Ang title po ng talk na ito ay Diabetes 101, What You Need to Know About Diabetes. Okay. So, ito po yung mga basics tungkol sa diabetes. Gaya ng sinabi ko, ako po yung presidente ng Philippine Society of Endocrinology, Diabetes and Metabolism. Ang tawag po sa amin ay PSEDM. So, there's about 400 of us all over the country. Uh, meron po aming mga training centers na nagtuturo sa mga doktor para maging endocrinologist. Dito sa Cebu, meron din kami. So, we have one here, training institution in Chonghua. So, ito po yung outline ng talk natin for today. No? Pag-uusapan natin kung bakit nagkakaroon ng diabetes, ano po yung dahilan kung bakit merong diabetes yung tao, ano po itong problema na ito. Next, yung mga symptoms ng diabetes. Tapos, ano po yung kailangan mong malaman kung meron kayong laboratory test na uh, daladala nyo sa doktor. Bago kayo makita ng doktor, pwede nyo na pong pag-aralan kung ano po yung results ninyo. Marami din pong klase ng diabetes. Ang pinaka-common is type 2. We do have type 1. Meron din diabetes sa mga pregnant. Ito yung tinatawag na gestational diabetes. Maraming pa pong iba yan. Pwede ko pong pag-usapan yan later. Okay? So, uh, matatouch din natin yung complications ng diabetes. Yan tayong short-term complications at long-term complications. Of course, konti kaalaman lang tungkol sa management ng diabetes. Pag-usapan natin yung mga ano pwedeng gamot. No? Uh, but pretty much, cover natin alos lahat ng aspeto ng pag-manage ng diabetes. So before I start, uh, dapat na maalala ninyo sa pag-alaga ng diabetes, apat dapat, no? Yung apat dapat, punta ka sa doktor, control ka ng pagkain, mag-ehersisyo po kayo, at saka yung huli, dapat inumin nyo yung damot ninyo, no? So you have to take your medications itong diabetes. Sabihin ko na po sa inyo talaga, lifetime po ito sa sakit. So hindi siya yung ginagamot lang ng two weeks. Okay na siya. So, ibig sabihin niyan, if you have diabetes at na-diagnose kayo ng diabetes, panghabang buhay po talaga siya. So, siguro, sasugutin ko na yung unang tanong, Dok, pag may gamot po ba ako ng diabetes, ibig po sabihin ito o lifetime na to? Sa totohanan lang, karaniwan po, meron ka talagang gamot na iinumin araw-araw. Uh, nasa doktor niyo na po yun, paano niya i-adjust? Some medications are actually changed, no? pinapalitan. So, kaya kailangan, mag-follow up kayo sa doktor. Para sa mga kaibigan natin, yung mga pasyente natin na Bisaya, kinanglan, adtugin mo sa doktor ninyo para uh, ma-adjust nila ang tambal ninyo. No? Ang frequency sa visit, depende yan sa assessment ng doktor. Pag sabi ng doktor na kailangan mo mas madalas yung visit mo kasi nga, mas babantayan ka namin with regard to your blood sugar. Uh, di syempre, closer po yung follow up. That's, that's why you have to come back two weeks, three weeks. But generally, a quarterly evaluation, so every three months, sometimes even four months, pwede na po yun. No? It depends on how your blood sugars are. So, importante na you keep this in mind, na diabetes po. Pag na-diagnose kayo na diabetic kayo, lifetime na po ito. No? So, this is something na you will have to deal with. So, that's the reason why tayo po ay magawa ng paraan talaga na ma-avoid na maging diabetic yung patients. We have so many diabetic patients na po sa Pilipinas, kaya nakakatakot na rin. Okay? So, introduction. What is diabetes? Ang diabetes po, sakit sa metabolism. Ang metabolism natin, ito po nakukontrol ng mga levels ng hormones natin. Unfortunately, sa diabetes po, ang pinuproblema natin is yung blood sugar natin tumataas. And the reason for this is yung insulin na ginagawa sa katawan natin na supposedly tutulong sa atin para ma-utilize natin yung glucose natin ay may defect. At saka yung mga receptor na tumatanggap doon sa insulin ninyo, nasisira po. Kaya nangyayari, 
pag medyo lumalala yung diabetes, yung blood sugar niyo po, hindi na siya controlled, tumataas at tumataas na siya. Okay? So, you go into a state of hyperglycemia or sobrang taas ng sugar. Ito po masama kasi nakaka-affect ito ng iba-ibang parte ng katawan ng tao. So, ibig sabihin yung mata niyo, pwede maapektahan, yung kidneys, no? at saka yung mga nerves mo pwede maapektahan din. So, ito yung pathophysiology na pinagsas- pinags- pinaglagay natin sa outline natin earlier. No? So, yung problem with diabetes is there is an internal problem sa katawan caused by an external problem. So, sometimes merong component na hereditary or meron pa yung kalahe na diabetic. No? So, sometimes din lifestyle. Mili kayo mag soft drinks. No? Kain kayo ng kain, ng buffet. No? Sobrang dami yung kinakain ninyo pwedeng bumalik sa inyo yun kasi nakasanayan nyo na yun. You're eating too much, uh, too much in fact that you don't need it anymore. Kaya nangyayari, i-deposit nyo sa katawan nyo, kaya tumataba tayo. Huh? So these are things na dapat nyo i-keep in mind because dito po nagsisimula yung diabetes. Pero malaking bagay kung nagkaroon kayo ng parents na diabetic, mother man nyo or father nyo or any relative na nakikita nyo dun sa family training nyo na mayroong diabetes, Ibig sabihin niyan, you are at risk. So, dapat mas maingat kayo. No? I said earlier, yung problem is, itong pancreas na gumagawa ng insulin sa katawan, may defect siya kung diabetic ka. Hindi na po enough yung ginagawa na insulin sa katawan. Minsan, yung nagagawang insulin, may defect pa. So, hindi nagagamit din. So, in effect, kailangan mo kasi yung insulin as a key to open up the doors and let the sugar go in the body for it to be used. If you don't have the key, hindi ka makakapasok, no? Hindi ka makakapagtrabaho. So that's the problem with diabetes. So ineffective yung insulin na ginagawa. Hormone po si insulin. So si insulin, ginagawa si insulin na katawan natin every time tumataas yung sugar natin. Pagtaas ng sugar, the body responds by releasing insulin. So pag release ni insulin, dapat i-open up niya yung doors para gamitin yung sugar. Paano dito maas yung blood level ng sugar? Okay? So, ano po ba yung symptoms ng diabetes? Ito yung common na sasabihin ng patients na symptoms nila. Isa dito yung madalas na pag-iihi ng gabi. No? So, nocturia ang tawag doon. No? So, sa Bisaya yan, mura ka gibusaw. No? Sa tunga, sa gabi. Sa gitna ng gabi, ihi ka ng ihi. So, often, these patients will tell you na, Dok, madalas po ako nagigising sa gabi. In fact, naapektahan yung tulog ko kasi ihi ako ng ihi. So sometimes three to four times in a night. No? So that's one symptom. And then they tend to ask you, bakit ganun to? Ihi ako na ihi. Hindi lang naman sa gabi. Buong araw ako ihi na ihi. Tapos syempre because they keep on urinating, they're also thirsty. No? So inom, inom din sila ng inom. Sometimes they try to justify, sabihin nila na, Dok, ihi ako na ihi kasi inom ako na inom ng tubig din. But that's unusual that you, you, you're not able to finish your sleep na four to six hours na sleep na dapat nakukompleto mo yon Pero hindi mo nakukompleto dahil gising ka nga nag-gising dahil sa ihi na ihi sa diabetes. So that's one. Next, I already talked about uh, polyuria. Yung polyphagia palagi nagugutom. No? So often, itong patients na to, mahilig sila kumain. No? So yung mga common denominator ng mga diabetic patients, usually ha, yung medyo nagigayin ng weight. But in the later stages ng diabetes, naglo-lose na sila ng weight because hindi na kaya ni body mag-compensate doon sa problem. So nangyayari, nag-breakdown. So biglang kapayatan is also a sign that you may have a blood sugar problem. No? Then you also have, uh, kaya dito yung weight loss. No? But there are more. No? Pwede ka rin gutumin ka lagi, hindi ka na ihi, inom ka na inom, mapayat ka. No? Minsan yung hindi mo makita mabuti yung uh, your eyesight can be affected also. Hindi mo na makita mabuti yung anong gusto mong tingnan. No? So lumalabo yung paningin mo. This can also be a sign of diabetes. No? And one of the other things that uh, patients complain of is yung parang kung sa Tagalog pa pamamalikat. Pero sa ato, sa Bisaya, no? parang numbness na siya or kanang binhod. No? So these are, these are the symptoms na uh, minimanifest ng pasyente na diabetic. Okay? So, ulidip siya because of the high blood glucose na uuhaw yung patient. So, they tend to drink more. Okay? So, again, I showed this, I talked about this earlier, yung polyuria. So, 
to ihi na ihi. This is manifested by patients. No? So you see patients like this also. Kung kita mo, di ba, yung grabe kumain, no? So, anlira is lagi. So, minsan nakakatakot din yan. No? Sometimes you feel that, okay, because you eat a lot of rice, particularly in the Visayas region, no? kasi mahilig tayo ng rice dito. No? Uh, Manila siguro, meron na rin, no? pero kita na rin hilig ka, rice eater talaga tayo. You have to be careful because if you eat too much, too much carbo, then you're going to load up. So, mayayari, whatever excess, di-deposit mo lang naman yan sa katawan mo. So, you start to gain weight. And that's not good. Huh? Okay, so, weight loss. I explained this earlier. Papayat ka kasi nagbe-break down yung katawan mo. So, if you see someone na biglang pumayat, ihi ng ihi, punta ng punta ng CR, you try to ask, maybe they're already manifesting with uh, diabetes. But hindi lang yan yung reason bakit ka rin katulong ng symptoms. Pwede ka rin magkaroon ng thyroid problem. Huh? That in itself, ibang usapan na naman yan. Okay, so here are the important numbers that you need to see, no? So, I won't confuse you with the numbers that you see. Isa lang po ang dapat ninyong pandaan dito. And that is, if you get an FBS, ang normal po ngayon ay 100. Okay? So, if yung blood sugar mo lampas na 100, that means that's a cause for concern. Okay? Diabetic ka pag lampas na 126. Pero 100 to 126, that's pre-diabetic. Okay? So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng pre-diabetic? So, you one step closer to diabetes. Pwede pang marimedyohan yung pre-diabetic. Diet, exercise, sometimes even medications can be given to these patients. Okay? So, don't get confused with the numbers. Isa lang yung number na tatandaan. FBS 100. There are other ways to diagnose diabetes. You also have glycosylated uh, hemoglobin or your A1C, no? uh, that's a little bit more expensive kaya hindi lahat nakakakuha niya. FBS is still the cheapest way for you to diagnose your diabetes. No? Pero pang isa, yung pinapainom yung, yung sugar. That's what you call the 75 gram OGTP. The numbers are different. I won't focus too much on them kasi hindi naman sila commonly uh, na-encounter ninyo. Siguro A1C, just for you to remember, you want to keep your A1C levels anywhere between uh, below or at least between 5.4 to about 6. No? Depende sa goal na gusto nyo gawin. So these are the three common. But the most important number, ano nga yun? FBS, less than 100, dapat yung normal na value. Anything above that is something that we need to be afraid of. So dapat magpatingin. No? So let's talk about anong mga klase ng diabetes. There are several. No? But the most common is type 1. And these are the patients that you will commonly encounter because ito po yung mga patients na 40 above. No? Or 45 above. Pwede rin. Basta relatively older age group. No? I'm not saying old. Older age group. No? Kasi yung mga type 1, they tend to belong to the younger age group. Ito mga type 1, ito po yung hindi talaga nakakagawa ng insulin. Kaya kailangan nila ng insulin na inject sa kanila. Yung type 2, they start off with, usually with oral medications, then eventually, if needed, baka malipat sila sa insulina. No? Sometimes nowadays kasi, medyo mas aggressive na yung doktor ninyo. So baka biglang mag-insulina muna sila and dahan-dahan palitan nila ng oral medications. So this is type 1. You see this in patients na medyo younger. Sila po yung bata pa, nagkaroon na ng diabetes, no? And then, kailangan talaga nila yung insulin for survival. Because if you don't give them insulin, they're not able to control their blood sugar. They present with complications early on. Okay? So yung type 2, ito naman yung uh, relatively older group. Ito yung really kumain, sobrang lumaki na kasi nga, you know, uh, wala masyadong discipline as far as exercise is concerned or diet is concerned. Very important ito. Kasi ito yung group na makikita nyo at madalas nyo may encounter. No? You see them in the hospitals, you see them uh, in, in, in pharmacies or even in church. No? These are the people that you commonly associate with. No? So most likely, pag pabaya kayo, pwede kayo rin maging type 2 diabetic. Okay? So uh, if you do the numbers sa buong Pilipinas, there's 100 million of us. Give or take, there's probably about 5 to 6 million already. And that's just an estimate. It could be more. No? So, ganun sila kadami. Yeah? So, I, I touched this earlier. Ito po yung 
gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes, ito naman diabetes for the pregnant women. This is actually common, okay? So, medyo limited tayo with regards to how we treat them because initially we treat them with diet. If they don't, they are not controlled with diet, pwede tayo mag-proceed ng insulin. So, problem nito, these mothers may have complications in giving birth if you don't control the blood sugar, okay? Long-term effects and diabetes, you have microvascular complications, you also have macrovascular. Ano po yung microvascular? So, yung mata, yung kidneys, and yung nerves are microvascular complications. Macrovascular complications, yun naman yung mga nagpaka-heart attack, your stroke, no? So, major vessels naman sila. So, I talked about this. Ito po yung heart problem, no? Hindi yung broken hearted, ah. Hindi kasali yun. So, yung heart problem, you have a heart attack, no? Or if you have like a big stroke or a small stroke, that's very common among patients that have uncontrolled blood sugar. Okay? So, yung legs. So, hindi ibig sabihin yung legs, maganda yung legs. So, mga diabetic, medyo malaki rin yung legs kasi nagigain yung weight, no? Pero, ang ibig sabihin dito, nababara yung legs. Okay? So, that's the reason why you have these type of complications. Okay? Microvascular complications will run this through. Common problem magkaroon ng, di ng dialysis is because of diabetes na uncontrolled. Okay? So, Iba pa dito yung problem sa mata, no? nalalabo yung paningin, at the same time, yung natuputulan ng paa kasi na-infected yung paa as diabetic. Okay? So you also have peripheral vascular disease. I discussed this. Ito yung nababara yung ugat nyo sa distant na mga arteries. No? A poor wound healing. Okay? So there are other complications uh, na related sa diabetes. Usually yung mga sakit na na-amplify. So dapat alagaan nyo rin yung mga infection, yung post-surgery, pagkatapos ng opera, dapat control yung sugars. I touched this a little bit. No? Ito po yung nerves. Pag nasira yung nerves nyo, hindi nyo na nararamdaman kung sakali natutusok kayo, nakaapa kayo ng karayom, or nakaapa kayo ng tamtaks. Hindi nyo na mararamdaman yun. So, mayayari, ito po yung uh, complication na susugat, may infected, it can get worse. Baka maputol yung paano yun. Okay? So, how do we manage? Diet is very important. Look at this particular table. It tells you na half ng kakainin mo dapat ay non-starchy vegetables. Fill up your stomach with vegetables. Then one quart, pwede ka mag-rice, pwede ka mag-bread. No? And then yung protein, ito na yung fish, ito na yung meat, ito na yung pwede. So yung milk or yogurt is together with the main meal. Then you have fruits. Yung fruits mo limited din. Hindi na pwede ubusin mo lahat yung isang basket ng fruits. No? Kasi that's very dangerous as well. So what about management? The recommendation dito, dapat mag-stretching ka when you get up in the morning and then you spend at least 20 to 30 minutes. So 30 minutes maximum, three times a week. No, Some patients do this every day. But generally, what we recommend is only about 30 minutes, three times a week. So when you stretch, you exercise, dapat mag-cool down para okay lang yung mga ano, muscle mo, hindi siya mag-sore. Take a lot of water. Okay. And then, dapat proper your clothes. Okay, pag you exercise ka, dapat comfortable ka. Hindi ka mag-wear na tight jeans no? at saka high heels. Okay? So, exercise brings your blood sugar down. So, this is a very important concept. So, siguro kung gusto mo magtipid and then you want to be able to control your sugar, pre-diabetic ka pa, mag-exercise ka para mag-use ka ng weight tapos ma-avoid mo yung complications. So, let's talk about medications. So, type 1 patients, insulin talaga sila. Okay? So, for type 2 patients, you have several options. Pwede ka mag-insulin, pwede ka mag-oral medications. There's a very long list of medications that you can use for diabetes. That's beyond the scope of this particular talk. At hindi natin makukover ng 30 minutes na kasi katapusin tayo. I just want to emphasize four very important things and then we're going to talk about them. The doctor is your friend with diabetes. So, you have to see your doctor. The follow-up, usually, will they will tell you First, two to three weeks muna follow up, and then succeeding weeks, two months na yan, three months na yan. Okay? So, mas frequent yung uh, follow up if early on in the management of diabetes, particularly kung mataas pa yung blood sugar mo. Okay? Keep in mind that preventing the complication of diabetes is what we want to have to happen because we won't be able to cure diabetes. No? So, remember four things that I told you today? No? The doctor is your friend, so you have to go visit your doctor. No? 
Second, exercise is very important tool for you to control your diabetes or prevent diabetes. Diet is also very important. No? And lastly, medication. So, importante po yung medication. So, apat dapat. No? I hope that I was able to cover most of the key points for diabetes. And uh, I look forward to your questions uh, in a few minutes. So, we will answer your questions. Thank you and good morning. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, meron tayong questions, no? And, uh, actually, they sent this earlier uh, before we started the program. So, I'm sure that they will add some more. So, let's go through this. This is from Marco uh, from Cebu. Pag may langgam ang ihi, diabetic na po ba? No? Interesting question because uh, actually, nung olden times, wala pa tayong mga laboratory, ito talaga yung paraan na para pag-diagnose pag nila na may problema yung pasyente. So, pag, pag umihi at tapos nga langgam, the likelihood is that the blood sugar, the sugar level in the urine is actually high and therefore, pwede nga. No? So, but you know, we are in modern times, baka naman uh, gusto mo magpakuha ka nalang ng urinalysis. No? Okay? I am from Cebu. Okay, ang pangangati po ba ay sinyalis ng diabetes? Okay? So, this is a good question. No? It depends kung saan pa parte na katawan. No? For the women, one of the common manifestations of uh, diabetes is yung uh, dun sa personal organ ng babae. No? So, sometimes they come to the clinic, they tell us, look, I have this problem, I went to my OB, and she thinks I, has, I have diabetes. So, that can commonly happen to women. For men, or for in general, lahat po, common po yung pangangati sa, sa mga diabetic patients. In fact, you can have an infected na wound dahil sa pangangati that gets worse. Uh, and this happens among diabetics. So the answer is yes. It's common for uh, diabetic patients. Does it mean that you have diabetes? Not necessarily. But it is a common manifestation for those that have diabetes. Yeah? Uh, Cynthia from BCG. Nakakahawa po ba ang diabetes? No? It is not contagious. Uh, thankfully, hindi siya nakakahawa. But it's worse because it can be a traitor in a sense na kakakumpiyansa kayo masyado, iniisip niyo okay lang siya. You have to keep in mind that uh, once you are diagnosed with diabetes, hindi na po siya mag-reverse. May forever sa diabetes. Okay? Sami from Manila, ang tatay ko po ay diabetic at na-admit ko siya dahil sa pneumonia. Kailangan ko po ba siya pabakunahan? We recommend uh, immunization for patients with diabetes. For patients in general, immunization is very important. Okay? So sabihin mo, ang daming karoon ng issue sa, sa immunization. So immunization is still a very important way to prevent further complications from other diseases. No? So, uh, we push particularly pneumonia and flu vaccine for diabetic patients. No? But we also give hepatitis B vaccine to patients that are diabetic. Okay? So, these are key things that you need to remember. Okay? So, from Manila, ang pneumonia po ba ay nagagamot? Yes, pneumonia can easily be treated if it is diagnosed early. It's a little bit difficult to treat pneumonia in diabetic patients, pero generally nagagamot po siya. No? Jimmy from Manila, bawal po ba kumain ng sweets pag diabetic? Okay? So, mahaba po yung list ng pagkain na bawal pag diabetic. But as I said, medyo mahaba-habang oras din yung kailangan natin to discuss that. But in general, you know po, kasi yung problem mo sa diabetes is yung mataas na sugar madadagdagan po yung problem mo kung nadagdagan mo yung sugar sa katawan mo. So, iwasan nyo po yung sweets. So, commonly, you have coffee, soft drinks, juice, cake, ice cream. So, these are the common ones. No? So, ingat ka rin sa pagkain na fatty. No? So, dito sa Cebu, mahilig kami sa lechon, sa humba. Ito po yung mga pagkain na dapat pag-ingatan natin. Okay? We have Chris from Manila. Kahit wala po ba ang naramdaman, pwede po rin bang maging diabetic? Yes. Some of the patients can be asymptomatic habang maaga pa yung diabetes. So early on in the diabetes na manifestations, wala pa talaga sila nararamdaman. So you might have to be checked and uh, hopefully it, it stays that way na wala kang maramdaman. But if it gets worse, please do get 
consult so that they can give you medications. Anna from QC, ang diabetes po ba ay forever? Sinagot ko na to. May forever diabetes. No? So there are some more questions here. Okay. Emily uh, from Cebu, I suppose, no? Revilla. If A1C of a patient goes up to 11, do they need insulin shots already? Okay. So ito po, A1C, ito po yung gauge natin. Three months po yan na average. If you look at the 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 table I showed earlier, normal dyan is mga 5.4 to 6, no more or less. If 11 ka na, medyo mataas na yan. So, uh, if you reach a level of 10, on the average, you're about 240 yung blood sugar mo. So, pag 11, pataas. Pataas ng pataas yan. So, that means you're looking at about 300 na po yung blood sugar. So, the question is, kailangan mo mag-insulin. Mukhang kailangan mo na mag-insulin kasi mataas na siya. Okay? So, anything above 9, candidate ka na talaga mag-insulin. Okay? So go see a doctor, check ka kasi kailangan makontrol yung sugar. Joyce from Cebu, can diabetic patient uh, take his or her medication together with food supplement? Okay? So ito medyo controversial ito kasi uh, you're talking about a supplement and you're talking about medication. Malaki po yung pinagkaiba ng dalawa. No? Importante po si medication. Okay? So I'll stick with that because medication is what you need. You don't need supplement. Okay? Kailangan mo ng gamot para sa diabetes. Supplement kaya supplement siya eh. Hindi naman siya primary. Secondary naman siya na problem. It can have some effect, but there's not enough evidence for us to suggest na unahin mo to. Baka makatulong, yes. I won't say totally wala. But keep in mind, the key here is to control your blood sugar and your medications can help you with that. Okay? So we have some questions from Cavite and Tagig. So related itong question na ito from Tina and Sharon. Kung kulang ang budget sa bakuna, ano po ba pwedeng gawin? Tapos ito naman, mahal po ba magbakuna? Okay, so we also discussed that a little bit. I think some of the pharmacists, no, in particular, Mercury has a program for that. I think they can help you with regard to your vaccinations. No? So you can go to them or check out other pharmacies that can help you with regard to uh, vaccinations and uh, as well as other programs that uh, you can avail of. Uh, that's it for the Q&A. Any other questions from the audience? Pero po tayo audience dito sa Cebu. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this one is from Facebook, no? Murod Merlinda, bakit po tumataba ang mga diabetic? Okay? So, maraming reasons bakit sila nagigain ng weight. Some of these reasons we already discussed earlier. Madalas po sila nagugutom. And therefore, makain sila lagi. And when you eat a lot, tendency, you tend to store more. No? For diabetic patients on medications, these medications nagpapababa ng sugar. The body interprets it sometimes na sinasabi niya na hugutom ka o nagpukulang, baka effect po ng medication. So kaya nangyayari, kain sila na kahit sa new weight gain sila. No? So that we should prevent that from happening also na lumaki na lumaki o lumobo yung patients natin. Kaya we have to be careful, we have to monitor them closely. Kailangan po talaga in the initial management, magkaroon tayo ng engagement between the patient and the dietary services. Kasi kailangan kayo makausap yung dietitian to discuss the important aspects of what you need to eat, what you should avoid. No? Sunshine from Facebook, ano po ulit ang most important vaccines? Kulang po, budget po. Okay. Tingnan natin kung in the future, I'm sure the government is working on it as well as no, uh, other private groups are also trying to find ways to provide opportunities to dun sa mga pasyente natin na ulang yung budget. No? So, uh, hopefully it will come soon. But hopefully also, at this point, you can ask around for the available. Vaccines for diabetic patients, very important. Pneumonia, flu, at saka hepatitis. Ito po yung top three na kailangan mo sa diabetic na patient. Okay? So, this one is from FB also. Yoli Hirao, bawal po ba ang honey? Pag may diabetes. No? Uh, so, okay. So, 
ay suppose na yung honey niya ay itong nilalagay sa container na galing sa bee. Hindi yung honey na partner mo, no? So yung honey, okay, so uh, I do get this. May mga patients na sabi na, Dok, honey na lang ako, Dok, di naman siya masyado matamis. But in reality, it is actually sweet, no? Uh, there's still a possibility na tumaas yung blood sugar mo. And therefore, we still caution our patients na ingat ka pa rin kasi pwedeng tumaas siya. Kasi minsan ginagawa na nila parang gatas yung honey. They mix it with water. Best way to know whether or not you're taking in something that's bad for you is to monitor your blood sugar. So check mo yung blood sugar mo. Uh, that's a strategy that we teach our patient. Kung nung kakainin mo, check mo yung sugar, tapos pag tumaas, then maybe you should not be taking it or you should not be eating it. No? So this one is from Facebook or from here, no? Facebook pa rin to, no? Doc, pag naka-insulin na po ba, may chance na po ba ang mas stop ang insulin? Mas safe and effective po ba ito sa tablets? So this is a very common question, very important question. Some of the patients are started early sa diabetes. Umaaga sila naka-insulin naka uh, when they're diabetic, no? So sometimes, if they're early enough, we're able to let the body rest, nakaproduce siya ng sarili niyang insulin, no? So, pwede pa po siya malipat ulit sa tablet. Okay? So, as to the question, sana mas magaling, no? Mahirap sabihin uh, because we have to individualize the patient. So, isa-isa talaga yung pasyente. So, some patients will work well with insulin. Some patients prefer insulin. No? Some patients, okay sila sa tablet. Minsan, kinakombine din ang doktor niyo yan kasi sa out of convenience, no? But, each patient is special. Each patient is very important and we, we would like to take care of all of you, uh, especially if you're diabetic because the care for diabetic is multifactorial, multiple groups, multiple doctors, tsaka personnel ang uh, involved sa care sa mga diabetic patients. No? So for you, yung medication mo, insulin and tablets can go together. Pwede cure insulin, pwede cure tablet. Uh, it will work differently from different persons. So, dapat naka-individualize. Okay? Okay, I think that's the last uh, question for today. I'm very thankful for joining me this morning. And then, uh, later on this week, we have two more. What's the name? Wala. Here. Okay. So we have Dr. Aurora Makabalu. Uh, that's 10.30 on April 25. That's tomorrow. Okay. Uh, she'll be broadcasting from Mercury Retiro. Okay. And then we have Mr. Nelson Tubon to talk about adherence for patients with diabetes. I think the patient po ito si ano? Si a pharmacist pala si sir. Uh, ito ay sa Retiro din. So sa Manila naman. Okay. So again, in behalf of everyone here in Cebu, okay, at saka sa Pilipinas, kung wala kayo sa Pilipinas, uh, magandang umaga po and I hope you learned a lot for today. Thank you so much for inviting me and good morning.